Arsenal have taken the Premier League by storm this year, scoring an impressive 17 goals already and only conceding seven in the seven games they've played so far. They've managed to keep an impressive three clean sheets so far and have looked utterly dominant in most games they've played so far. Even in the one loss that they had against Manchester United, Arsenal were by far the better team in the match itself. United played with patience and were utterly devastating on the counter and deserved to win the game. But despite deserving to win, because of their counter-attacking brilliance, doesn't take away from how well Arsenal played. That game too was won with a nice dose of VAR controversy that just doesn't seem to end in the Premier League. Christian Eriksen dallied on the ball for a moment too long and Odegaard pushed Eriksen off the ball for Saka to steal it and give a defence-splitting pass through to Martinelli. Martinelli then under pressure from Dallow, coolly finished past David De Gea to give Arsenal the lead. It was certainly a foul by Odegaard on Eriksen. There is absolutely no doubt about it. But the question with VAR has always been whether the referee made a clear and obvious error. He had a direct vision of the entire scene and chose not to give it as a foul. Had Arsenal missed the goal, for example, and hit it wide, would play have resumed with a goal kick to United or a foul near the halfway line? And if the argument is that since it was a foul, it must be given, then the question of the purpose of on-field referees with their subjective judgments, which have been a part of the game, becomes increasingly relevant. But that moment aside, United took the rest of the game by the scruff of the neck, by opening the scoring and never looking back from that moment on, even when Arsenal piled the pressure. United only struck back with two rapid counter-attacks and scored two more goals to put the game to bed. Hi guys, and welcome to Football Talk, where we bring you the latest news from the top five leagues in Europe and also discuss potential title contenders from the various leagues. Seriously, can there be one video where it's the same intro? No. All right, well, never mind. Back to the video discussing Arsenal's title credentials for this season. Well, firstly, before getting into any talk about whether Arsenal are genuine title contenders, Manchester City and Tottenham have to be analysed during this international break. Both teams are unbeaten in the seven games they've played, and unlike Arsenal, are yet to lose a game. City have Guardiola and Haaland, and Tottenham have Conte, Son and Harry Kane. So the title race is nowhere near decided yet. But what does the manager of the month for August have to offer as his title credentials? Simply put, Arsenal have been superb this season. Even in the loss against United, they didn't play badly. But put that performance aside, this season has been a revelation. Odegaard has elevated his levels as a player and is genuinely touching world-class levels with his consistently good performances. Gabriel Jesus has been a revelation and is a player in inspired form with four goals scored and three assists already. Granit Xhaka is a player reborn in his new role and is consistently performing in positions closer to the box. Zinchenko has shown why Arteta and Guardiola rated him so highly. Saliba has shown that he belongs among the Premier League's elites. But let's not go into each player right now. That's not the purpose of this video. So far, despite supreme performances by the Arsenal team in the games they've played, they've not really gone up against the best opposition. The early signs are promising and could mean a lot going further down the road. But it's the month of October that will determine whether Arsenal have what it takes to be champions this year. They go up against Tottenham on the first day of October and then follow that trip up with a match against Liverpool, with both games being played at the Emirates. Initially, this month would have also seen Arsenal play against Manchester City, but that match has been postponed. So how Arsenal do against Tottenham, who are genuine title contenders, and then Liverpool, who should have recovered from the injury losses that have been affecting them so far, would go a long way towards telling how Arteta would do in the rest of the season. It's not about whether they win or lose those games, but about how they play. If Arsenal can compete in both games in a very good game of football, then Arsenal fans can expect the performances to be sustained throughout the season and expect Arsenal to be in the title race up to the final games of the season.